Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Gout Racer 2004. Uh, I think as far as this recording session I've done with the last couple of episodes, this will probably be the last one, so no time limits. Might be a longer one, could be a shorter one, but we'll just go with it. That's what I should say. Sometimes I notice, like, I'll tell you guys this a specific length for an episode and then it hardly ever me it matches that it's usually longer or shorter so i'm just gonna say uh we'll see how long this will be obviously once we get there black ruby's up i haven't raced with her in a while she's got a longer growth type so i just finished first here on uh, the turf um she has no abilities which is a bummer but if we can do well enough with her and get her a couple titles, I mean, she wouldn't be bad for breeding. Like, I'm not a fan of the feel rating and the response. The power is not good as well. I mean, the game just gave her to me. To be honest, I'm like, I'm really in no desire to, like, use her long term. Because, again, she has no abilities. But she is flexible with dirt and turf. That's a good thing. Like, she's great on both. So, on that, on that note alone, I mean, it might be worth i mean it might be useful and be worth it to use her if we're going to focus on trying to get you know some dirt horses out of her as well so that means i i wonder if i should focus her on the dirt you know like i wonder if it'd be easier to actually achieve domination with her on the dirt compared to turf i'm considering it because that would be great like she's a horse for example we could try to breed with long live bolero but she's not the super brood mare I was talking about in the last episode. Like, she doesn't have S and A ranked stats across the board, you know. She'll have maybe a couple S's, if that, one or two. And then maybe some A's and some B's. Like, she'll be average, a little bit less than that. A little bit better, I should say. In some categories and not. I feel like I'm not really making sense. What I'm trying to say is, she could be a horse worth using... To breed with like long lived bolero, especially if you want to try to really get dirt back into that pedigree. Um, she's not happy with the pace here, which, you know, just relax. Um, you know, but again, like if I breed her in long lived bolero, I just feel like we're, we're going to get an average horse. I don't know. Now, if we could get a horse with really good speed, that can make a difference, especially for the dirt. Um, but I don't know. But she's someone I'm potentially considering using a Bolero. Like I said, she has great for turf and dirt, so we could try to focus more on the dirt aspect of that. Okay. Yeah, no abilities. So let's see how she holds on to this. On tap. On tap. It's amazing how much the stamina falls when your horse has a bad power rating and you run them up a hill. They just, like, instantly fall off. Now, that's an open win. She crushes that, as she should. She's an S-ranked horse. So, I'm going to try her on the dirt. Yeah, she wins by six lengths. We'll take it. Yeah, I would need to achieve some really solid success with her. A title. And whatever else we could we could accompany that with to improve her breeding resume. But we'll see. Anyways, Moonbee's up in a grade three. That's all we can do with him. Not the favorite. Kind of sandwiched between the first and the second favorite, technically. So we're all running one, two, three. Um, top five goal for Moon. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what that's about, but we'll roll with it. Do the best we can. It's a good start for Moon, as it usually always is. 
The one and the three are way back there, so I'm pretty curious what they're gonna do. They have a long way to go. They try to catch up to us, so. Hopefully with us and Moon, we're just gonna go ahead and just kinda catch them napping. Catch them slacking and catch them napping. Both at the same time, really. Very good run. And there's a revolution and another easy grade three victory for Moon B. I mean, this guy is, I don't know why I am still shocked at how well he's done for us. And I think it's just because he's over exceeded what his parents did. I think that's the main thing. Like if he was doing just about the same level of uh, winning that King B and Gemstone did, then I wouldn't look at him that way. But I think it's because he has literally overachieved beyond what both of them did, really. I just wasn't really expecting that. I thought he was going to be slightly better. He has become much better than the both of them. He's running perfect races, and he's not giving me any issues at the same time. But yeah, two good wins for Black Ruby and Moon. That's what we need. We just need wins, man. Continue to stack the wins. So, Moon, they won him in the Royal Cup. I don't even think he can run in that. So yeah, somebody else is already in that race. I could run him on the dirt. I mean, I think he's fast enough to win a GWS dirt race. So let's give it a shot. Will he be in the blue? Yeah, he will. Let's, let's go ahead and try him out there. And then, um, uh, Black Ruby. Yeah, I'll have to look at her stats and long lived boleros to see if they'd be compatible. Like, we know we would get good speed, good feel. Temper would be decent. Well, actually, the feel, because her feel is bad. Yeah, I don't really know, man. Like, I want to keep Bolero. I have to keep Bolero around just for the bloodline, of course, but. We just, we haven't had great, I mean, we haven't had really success since the Great Bolero. Um, unfortunately, so she runs 9 to 13. I want to try her out in the dirt. That G1 would have been perfect, but it's fine. We can find something else for her. If there's no dirt races yet, then I'll just run her. Let's run her. She's 9 to 13. I wanted to run her in this race against the Phillies. Top three go to the Cherry Cup. It's too far along shorter, but I think she can handle it if I run her right. But we'll see. Still no real pressure of Black and Ruby. Like, if I'm going to breed with her, like I said, just to try to get Dirt back in this pedigree, which I think would be better suited for the horse's stats. Like, I don't... These type of stats, to me, makes running on the turf a bit of a struggle. But I feel like on the Dirt, with those stats, we'd be fine. I mean, like, Great Bolero didn't have fantastic stats. Not really. He had a couple of decent ones, so... I feel like that's where we're missing out. I can get Ant B again, but would I? No. No. no if I saw a Western Tiger pop back up, would I get him? Possibly, but in all honesty, we would need a really strong Broodmare. Instead of getting the same decent sires again. Tossy Blondes up in the LA Oaks decided to give her a shot on the dirt, see how she would do. Um, so yeah, she's, she's expected to finish ninth. Last place. I mean, you look at her odds. She has no chance today because she's not a dirt horse. <laughs> but I figured I would give her a shot. But the good thing is, like, we'll hit our goal. So we're not going to lose her regardless of how we finish in this race. I 
Let's notice this is Toxic Blonde in the. Oh, yeah. LA Oaks. I'm thinking about um, the other dirt race we decided to put Black Ruby in. Or. No, who do we put in that race? I can't remember. No, it wasn't Black Ruby. Moonbee? Yeah, I think it was Moon. Alright, well, uh, she got out to a decent start, but again, she's not a closer like Honeybee, so I don't know. I mean, there's no pressure here. There's zero pressure at all. If she's comfortable and I can try to get a revolution with her, that's our best chance. Now, if she won this, that'd be a huge... Okay, one. so, uh, capture software issues. Again, it just happens. There's no fix for it. Uh, I don't know what you guys missed. But if you missed most of the last race with Toxic Blonde in the uh, LA Oaks, uh, she didn't do bad. We were supposed to finish 14th. She had terrible odds. We ended up finishing... Oh, no, we were supposed to finish 9th in last place. We we had the worst odds in the field. Like We were basically bet at 50-1, to 1, and the rest of the field at the lowest was like 9-1. to 1. Um, But she finished 7th out of 9th. She beat two horses is what I'm trying to say. So she didn't actually do that bad. Um, yeah, her stats are not really that good, unfortunately. Like, she's very average. So like I said, I mean, I don't have any serious expectations with Toxic Blind. I'm just going to try to continue to do the best I can with her. And just hope we get some decent results when we can. But it's really about it. I just feel like she's going to struggle at a lot of places. Um, Dublin? I'm going to try her out in this. I, I think maybe she can get lucky with the G1 here and there. Or the Britain. Let's just do this for her. So yeah, you guys didn't miss anything, honestly. I apologize for that. Like I guess there's nothing I can do about it. Just have to be more conscious of checking, making sure everything is good. Sometimes when I record, obviously I'm just rolling on. I'm not really thinking about checking to make sure everything is working. Black Ruby's up in a grade two already. She's a favorite, as she should be. And, uh, yeah. Top three go to the Cherry Cup. So if she wins this, we can get her in a good spot for a G1. And maybe try to get her mile, mile title. That's the thing. So many of my horses up until recently just never got titles. Pink Gemstone, Bolero. I think Bolero got Horse of the Year. No, he, ne he never got Horse of the Year. Otherwise, he would have that he would have had that title and he could have been in the Hall of Fame. I thought he did get Horse of the Year. I swear he did, but apparently not. <laughs> I couldn't enter him into the Hall of Fame. Unless, do you need GWS? That's the thing. I keep forgetting. Maybe you need GWS wins for the Hall of Fame. So that's the case. I guess Great Bolero only retired with one title, but the point I'm trying to make is that up until recently, with like Chasing Hearts and a couple of the horses now that have titles, like none of my originals in this game have had titles. Um, so I would like to still try to focus on that with whoever I can get one with, if it's there. To knock over and go ahead and just kind of creep up right past you, bro. She's got a really quick response. Despite the fact that I think her response rating is low, that doesn't really make any sense. So, Black Ruby is going on to the Cherry Cup. And there's no questions and no doubts about it. She's a good horse. Like I said, I just... You know, no abilities is just like, ugh. I don't like breeding horses with no abilities unless they're super horses, right? <laughs> like, I... I can't recall if Desert Diver had any abilities. I feel like he didn't. I don't think he did. You know, so breeding with a horse like that is different because he's such a strong horse. He doesn't need abilities. Black Ruby's not the strongest brood mare. Or the strongest mare to brood mare in the game. So, you know, breeding her, it's like, it has to be worthwhile. She has to really overachieve on the track to increase her record. But um, we've gotten four wins for our uh, seven starts, so I mean, I'm, I'm in rhythm with her. It's three back to back, and she's got a decent growth type. It's normal, and like I said, her flexibility as well helps. So she's not bad. 
you know, they won her in the cherry cup, so let's get her ready for that. She'll be in the blue, top four go to the Golden Oaks, and she can run that distance as well. So we, I'm probably just going to keep her on this path, which I kind of keep forgetting to check with my horses because that's an easy way to get awards and titles. But Well, mainly awards, I should say. Titles, you really have to focus on the specifics. Um, Toxic, or Tigris of Stone, should definitely focus on the three-year-old Philly path for her. So let's see. I mean, once we have to race her next time. She's missed a couple of races, but no big deal. I mean, I didn't focus on the paths last year at all. Like, I didn't look at them, and, like, we won most of the awards, you know? So I feel like as long as I'm putting my horses in big races and we're winning consistently, I, I feel like we'll put ourselves in a chance. Um, we'll give ourselves a good chance and put ourselves in a position, I should say, to actually win you know, those, those awards without me having to obsess over it. Speaking of Tigris, she's up in the grade six Australian stakes here. It's a sprint. She's expected to finish fourth. And uh, that's not bad. That's really not bad uh, for this type of uh, field. We got empty treaty, secret alpha. Personal Hill, so um, no pressure here with Tigris. I mean, we're carrying less weight. Top five goal, give us that flexibility. I think she's strong enough to win this race if I run it right. I know I got to get her in front. Yeah, we're talking about you, fair lady. Let's see how you do. Top five goal, let's get her a good result. The horses are on the track. If you didn't know, the horses, they're there. They're on the track. <laughs> Tigris, let's go, my girl. Australia, are you ready for Lady Tigris? We'll see. It is time to rock and roll here with Tigris of Stone. Not the best start, but we'll get her out anyways. And actually, she punches out quite well. She has decent braking, so it's a good start. It's going to be a quick sprint. I need some. Is there any other front runners in this race? There is. Like, why aren't you at the front? Take the lead. I don't drop off too much. We want to make sure we keep our positioning here. Okay, she gets a seven. That's good. Oh, you're going to try to overtake. I'm not allowing it to happen. I'm going to keep Tigris right here. Two sevens. We get a revolution. This is her race to win, without any doubts. Get her rolling now. She is out in front. She's got a lot to go. No Rebo, but Tigris is clearly out. A furlong left to go. Tigris a stone. Down the stretch she comes. There's last corner leader. If she can hold off for this half of a furlong, she's going to go ahead and get a huge win. <laughs> It's her first grade one win, ladies and gentlemen, and she wins in Australia, and she beats the sprinters. Let's freaking go. And that's a beautiful shot right there. I love it. Hey, I didn't say a win was coming, and she sets the record, mainly because I guess we haven't won that race before, or did she actually set that record on merit? Either way, that's a fantastic, fantastic result for Tigris. She gets her first grade one, and she's already looking strong here. Very happy with that, man. Very, very happy with that. I figure as long as I got her out in front, man, she, she's clear. And that is the difference with her. She is a horse that I have to make sure she is overtaking everybody, and she is in the lead as we head into the final stretch, the final turn. She has to be in front. As long as that's the case, she she's proven she can stay out. It's almost a perfect race. And like I said, she gets her first grade one, so that's a good win. That's a big-time win as a three-year-old, man. That's a big three-year-old win for that filly. She does it in style. 12,000 points for us as well. And we're not even supposed to win the race, so that makes it all the better. And that probably should bump her up to S. Wow. Yeah, she jumped from A to S off of that result. So Tigris, double S. I mean, look at these stats. She's a double S horse for sure. She's very similar to Butterfly Effect. You know, their stats are almost the same. 
Their stats are very similar. That's, I mean, that's great news. I'm retiring both of these gals for breeding. <laughs> like, you know, so I am extremely happy about that. From Flying Cowboy and Pink Gemstone, from Western Tiger and Irish Fleet, yeah. Flying Cowboy, he's been an awesome sire because he inherited a lot of that strength and power from Western Tiger. So even though Western Tiger has been gone, clearly Flying Cowboy has been awesome to fill in his spot. So yeah, Tigris, finally feel like I'm dialed in with her. So, um, she's three years old. What do I want to actually focus on with you, though? I mean, three-year-old award, title. That win was six furlong, so a sprinter title? Um... Yeah, I'm just trying to see. Three-year-old Philly. So next really big race would be the Free Asia. She'll be in the green. I could wait and put her in the Golden Oaks, and I think she's strong enough to handle that. You know, I'd rather run her in that Oaks, to be honest. And then uh, getting her a couple G1 wins across the board should help. 72 Stam. I mean, I, I think she's strong enough to handle that race. I do. She's got 81 power. She's got the staying, the response. Like, I, I think she'll be fine. Yeah, I, I think she's very capable of handling that. Yeah, really happy, man. I'm really happy off of that result for her. Um, she definitely deserved that. Very busy uh, last four races here. Butterfly Effect, Moonbee. All grade ones for the whole gang. Two GWS races. Moon B trying the dirt for the first time in a GWS and Formal Opera. The dirt is his category. This is the universe, Universal Cup. So I haven't won this race in a while. I don't even know if I've ever won it in this race, have I? I can't remember. Five races today. Stargazing as well. Gosh, we are stacked. Everybody, for the most part, is racing overseas except for Golden Boy, who's going for that sprint title. He's got six wins to his name. Uh, attack no no attack needed I wanted to see what titles we have for him I think it's just the one right yeah horse of the year yeah he got horse of the year last year that's awesome man golden boy from honest pegasus and lee's gold you know <laughs> that's uh yeah I'm just I'm happy I'm really happy with our horses for the most part like all of them that are just still doing well Bolero is really the only one that's struggling out of the entire bunch And he's, of course, he was never meant to be as good as they were, anyways. But, again, I'm still keeping that horse alive. And, gotta be honest, I might just have to really wait to, for that right broodmare. I know I've talked about Black Ruby earlier, just because of that dirt and turf compatibility. But, unless we really hit it out of the park with Black Ruby, I just feel like the reason why the Bolero offspring have not been well on track and haven't achieved great Boleros condition is because the parents just haven't been that strong keep in mind great bolero came from bionic club and scabbit you know <laughs> he came from two really strong horses in this game so i feel like for a horse in this case which is long live bolero we got to pair him up with an extremely powerful broodmare to balance out any of his bad stats raise the level up and then we can get great bolero back we'll have to wait and see golden boys up in the royal cup we should be the favorite i mean if they're saying anybody is going to be close to us which nobody in this field gives me any reason for concern golden boy your reigning defending horse of the year three-year-old horse of the year champion he's four years old right now doesn't have any bad stats at least not for me he's been on the decline but who cares he's still strong enough to win and i'll keep running him until i can't trying to get him that sprint title good start for golden boy and um let's just see what they do up here i mean there's really no pressure 
think we have this race in the bag as long as we take care of business, right? <laughs> oh, crap. I did not see that horse at all. My bad. You're okay. You're okay, bud. Ah, did not mean to do that. That's my fault. No rebel. Don't really think we need it. Let's take off, my boy, golden boy. This dude is so fast, man. It's like, where did this speed come from? I didn't feel like Honest Pegasus was honestly this fast. Granted, he could have gotten it from Western Tiger, right? Because he has Western Tiger in his in his pedigree too. <laughs> Let's freaking go, man. Blows that out of the water. Golden Boy with another sprint title win. Or another sprint win, I should say. We're going for that title. Man, this dude, he's he is a joy to work with, honestly. He is such a joy to work with. Guy's an absolute stud. <laughs> Quite literally. So fast. Six length winner. It's no contest. Contact, he's unfazed. Yeah, gosh. Honest Pegasus and Flying Cowboy. They really they really are proving to be good sires, even though Cowboy is still here. Honest Pegasus has been gone. The Cowboy is still here, and he's been awesome. Switching gears, though, because we have a GWS dirt race on hand here. It's Moonby up, and he's not giving good odds because I guess the dirt is not his thing, clearly. So, yeah, he's not a dirt horse, but his dirt rating is okay. He's still got enough speed, and he has decent stamina. Like he, This is still a race we could win, even being favored at 12th. I mean, I would have to run perfectly. Starts with a good start. I get him established earlier. You know, maybe we can see what happens. Yeah, let's just see how he does, man. There's no pressure here. I need to beat two horses, though. But obviously, I'm going to try to do my best to finish as high as we can. So it's an okay start. Um, I don't know what the rest of the fields are going to do here. Just want to make sure we don't get past the leader. Just stay right here. This is cool. Right here, bud. Right here. It's going to be a tough race for sure, but I mean... I feel like if we get a, if we can get a good jump with him, he's in a position to maybe surprise people. I'm not saying we're gonna win. I'm just saying if we can make it happen somehow. Two sevens, that's good. No rebo, but I had to get him going now because I knew they were gonna get going super quickly. I just missed it. I just missed it. I was literally going to get him going right before they started to go. It's just like I just missed the timing. Because maybe if I would have timed it a bit sooner. And he's still finishing strong here. I don't know if it's going to be a top five, but this is what I mean. This the, We could have really won this race. I don't think those horses are that much faster than B. So he's going to finish sixth, but sixth instead of twelfth, like he was expected to finish. This guy is strong, man. It's a decent effort. Just missed a top five. Discreet Dancer sets the record. Ooh la la. Whatever. Almost a perfect race. That's a really good result there from Moon B. I'll take it. Just wanted to see how he, how he would do. Does he even get? Do you even get points for that for finishing sixth? I mean, I'm obviously not going to run him in the GWS dirt, but I figured if he won that race, I would have kept him in. Stargazing is up in the Heaven S. Expect to finish second behind Velvet a Apollo. We might as well be co-favorites, but what? I don't, know, I don't think I've ever been beaten by that horse in this game. Mainly, one, because it doesn't show up that often. And two, when I've lost races, I always pay attention to who's beating us. I Velvet Apollo? Okay. I mean, I think Stargazing's strong enough to, to win this. Last corner leader, keep that in mind. Such a great ability to have, honestly. Just delays your stamina from dropping that, that, that bit more.
Man, I'm thinking about the Dream Series, bro. Like, I've never... For anybody listening, I have never, ever, in this game, done the Dream Series, ever. So, like, going into that for my first time is going to be an actually new gaming experience that I'm very excited for. Of course, I've seen several people do it here on YouTube and whatever, but I've never participated myself because I just never have had good enough horses to get there. And I've never played the game this long. Like, this is my longest playthrough of this game ever. I know a lot of people have several saves where they've played through this game quite a bit of time, but this is definitively my longest playthrough of any Gallop Racer game, so... I'm finally getting to a point now where I can... Sorry, I was distracted by attacks. But yeah, like I haven't played this game as long as anybody else. Not even close. This is my longest playthrough, so Dream Cup, that, that's a big thing, man. So hopefully you guys are ready for that journey with me and, you know, just, you know, we, we, root, we root each other on. I mean, we all want the same thing. I want to win. I know you guys want to see winning because of the horses, some of which you've named. And we've just grown to like in general. It's like I said, man, I, I treat these horses as a part of our extended family, you know. Now, stargazing is going to have to get going now. There's Spurt. I had to get them going now because I did not like where we were. Drive. Come on, Star. Come on, Star, man. Dig in, brother. Let's go. Oh, he's fighting nicely. That spurt was so crucial. Oh, he's running down the six. He's running down this field. Oh, yeah. Stargazing's got this in the bag, bro. What an absolute animal. <laughs> Stargazing. My guy. How do you do it? <laughs> Stargazing. A true stud. I just, I'm at a loss for words with this guy, man. How does he do it? How does he do it? I believe he's also from Western Tiger in some way, man. Western Tiger, awesome sire. If you haven't used him, use him. If you haven't used him, use him. That's all I can say. Wins out by two lanes. Destroys Velvet Apollo. Not even close. Direct victory. Wow, what a win for Stargazing. Former Opera, he's up in the Universal Cup. This is big. Floral Crush is here. That's a tough horse, but that horse is going to be running at the front. So this race is all about timing my spurt. If I get a bad jump, that horse is probably going to be too strong to, 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 to catch up to. I mean, <laughs> Floral Crush, 99 speed. Second win, close race, okay. I mean, my gosh. I need this guy in the barn. We need him, do we not? That's insane. With a sustained growth type? He peaks at four, then he has a major drop-off. Why are they calling that sustained? Like, it's almost the same... It's almost like a fast growth type, but they're calling it sustained. Do they just mean that his stats aren't going to drop off significantly because they're so freaking high? Like, what the F? Ugh. 99 speed. Jeez, that's that's going to be tough. I mean, Formal Opera's up there in the 90s, but he's not 99. <laughs> Which is probably, what, 110 realistically in this game? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. You wouldn't even know I was on Secretariat because, one, of course, I have my own silk colors. And two, his hood colors aren't even realistic. All right, let's go, baby. Good start. Now, who are we looking for? Floral Crush. How could I forget? One horse, right? No, where is Floral? There's Floral going to the lead. Need to drop Secretariat back. Drop back, drop back, drop back. I can run him anywhere, really. Like, I don't have to have him in last place. I really don't. Oh, gosh. I'm going to save as much ground as possible.
Oh, no revolution today. Gosh, Floral Crush is way up there. I could have kept Secretariat up there, honestly, but I wanted to coast a little bit. Because we also have a chance to tap into that closer ability, but... Yeah, Floral Crush is going to be extremely hard to beat today. My goodness. I'm going to have to make sure we get a good run on that horse. Jeez, we have a long way to go, guys. We have an extremely long way to go. Okay, I gotta get going now. Let's go. Gosh, Floral Crush is just holding, man. I don't know. Yeah, I probably needed to get going way sooner, but we're closing. We're actually closing here. Oh, we're closing a lot with Secretariat. Maybe I should give this guy more faith. I mean, he is an all-time great horse for a reason and we're actually gonna we're going to completely annihilate floral crush in the rest of this field and get there to win the universal cup with formal opera cape i felt we were coming from a really far way off but then again if any horse is going to win a race like that it's going to be the one of the greatest thoroughbreds if not the greatest thoroughbred of all time of course eric i should know better Floral Crush falls all the way down to 11th. <laughs> and this is GWS dirt territory as well. He's already won it, but... And look at that. That's not even a good race from an eval perspective. <laughs> but who cares? <laughs> we just won one of the biggest races in this game. Wow. <laughs> well, I think we've been doing pretty well here. Uh, for these huge races. We have Butterfly Effect up in the Climax. We haven't been the favorite in any of them. Even Link is here. That's the thing. We got to chase Even Link this year. Because I know that horse is going to be running again in the GWS. Four years old. Let's see Even Link. Let's check you out. You have no abilities and your stats are honestly not even... You're, you're, you're not better than Butterfly Effect. This is a good thing, though. That means this horse may be easier to beat this year for the GWS. He was untouchable last year in the turf category. So I think we have a chance this year. Let's go Let's go get him. Let's go get him, man. It's a beautiful day for racing. Oh, right night. Yeah, same thing. Whatever, dude. <laughs> is Los Alamitos racing today? Los Alamitos. But anybody who has never watched Quarter Horses, watch Los Alamitos. I, th I don't think they race on weekdays, so I think it's only like Friday, maybe Saturday. I don't know their schedule anymore. I used to watch them faithfully like th four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. Well, technically three and four years ago, but I used to watch Los Alamitos faithfully, man. Just because, like, there's not that many quarter horse tracks to watch. And it was, you know, just nice to see uh, just some night racing. Also, made me miss L.A. Used to live in L.A. And I like watching horse racing from any tracks in California in general. Just because it just makes me miss the West Coast. And it keeps me motivated because I'm eventually relocating back out west to palm trees, basically. Palm trees and mountains. Like, I need that in my life. So, um... Yeah, just, you know, it's a good way to kind of think about the good times I had when I was initially out in California, which I was out there for school and sports. California is dope, man. It is for me. I know it's not for everybody, but there's to me, there's a part of a California that every person on the planet could like. If you like desert, if you like beach, you know, you obviously stay at the southern part of the state if you want the woodland you know kind of uh yeah the woodland more calm ish vibe you go up north to this you know to the northern part of the state you know like <laughs> you can really have whatever you want up there in all honesty so we tapped into solo here who am i walking uh desert divers here i didn't even realize that Okay. 
She's got a good jump. They're gonna have, these horses are gonna have to do a lot of work to catch butterfly effects, man. And I mean a lot of work. This is not she is not a pushover filly at four years old. She is in the top of her top of her prime at the top of her league and she's showing why she's blowing this field away she's blowing desert diver and everybody else completely away gate the wire that's my girl that's our girl butterfly effect gets it done again destroys even link and whoever else we were racing against like i said i didn't even realize desert diver was in the field butterfly effect she is her and stargazing and oh my goodness <laughs> These are the horses I was waiting for in this series. And the thing, we haven't even achieved close to the best yet. She beats Desert Diver and even Link by eight lengths, man. <laughs> there was some disrespect on my girl Butterfly Effect in our, in our live stream. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to need some more respect on my horses, my really good ones. Especially if I say, like, you know... This horse is the real deal. I've been saying this about Butterfly Effect really since she was two years old. I'm like, she's the real deal, man. It's, and she's showing that she's the real deal. <laughs> Eight lanes. She's beating the Desert Diver and even Link. It's not even close. Yeah, wow. They gave me negative they negative two thirty for that form of opera race, even though we won it and we're leading this <laughs> this game's a joke. Yeah, this game's a joke, bro. But what a week. That was an awesome week for us. Awesome, awesome week. And it's breeding season. Just that quick. And I already told you guys who we, who we were doing. Diamond plan with five of the brood mares, general reason with the other two. Because, like I said, I, I want to see if he's going to be worth it for those abilities and his stats. I want to see if he'll be worth it. If not, it is what it is, and I'll get rid of him or just stop breeding with him eventually. But Irish Fleet should be a decent horse to work with with him, hopefully. Then again, Irish Fleet didn't work with Desert Derby. We lost that horse, so I don't know. Irish Fleet may be really picky about who you breed with her. If I read the answer, I just, no idea. You know, no idea. So, we'll see. Okay, so Gemstone and Diamond Plant didn't conceive. Everybody else did. That's a little bit of a bummer, not going to lie, because Gemstone has been awesome. But the game did say they weren't uh, compatible, basically, and I just decided to go through with it anyways, because sometimes the, it'll say that, and then they can still conceive. So either way, I mean, realistically, the most important breeding, uh, the most important pairs that I wanted to be successful were successful, honestly. Of course, I would probably whether a, I would probably prefer, I should say, a general reason pair to not work, but it, it's not a big deal, honestly. Like, well, Gemstone might be more compatible with Formal Opera, which a lot of us have already been talking about anyway. So, six out of the seven can see we're getting another six foals. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm not complaining at all. You appear to be the ultimate business partner. To show how much I appreciate your efforts, you can ride my best horse. Uh, who is this going to be? Let me save right quick because I have no idea who she's talking about. No idea. It'd be awesome if it was like a really great horse I've been wanting. So yeah. Um, let's see who Cook is talking about. Who, who did you give us? Oops. Stargazing is off. Former Opera is off. And uh, Butterfly. They won her in the... I want to give her a four-month layoff. Like, that's not happening. Did they give me anybody? No, me and Cook are just extremely close now. That's all it is. We're just extremely close. I don't, she didn't give me any new horse, did she? No. I mean, I guess she's saying you can ride my best horse now, which I think is Butterfly Effect, and it's like, I, it, no offense, Cook, like, I'm already going to be riding with this horse, like, whether or not you tell me you don't want me to, I could care less. Um, 7G1 wins for Butterfly Effect. Does she have a title yet? Yeah, all rounder. Sweet. 
So again, she's finished in the top seven, or she's finished in the top three, 15 times out of her 17 starts. She's only dropped two races. Uh, well, technically four wins. Seven uh, G1 wins. She is, she's on a roll, man. And uh, that big G1 win for her in the climax. So she's, I don't know what title she's working on. I haven't really kept track of her G1s or anybody, so. You know what, I should now. So she's got a Cherry Cup. She's got two on the mile. She did win that Virgo S. I forgot about that. Oh, no, only one on the, hold on. Uh, do I have my pen and paper? I do not. Okay, I'm just going to do this like this and put it into my spreadsheet later. So, butterfly effect. She's got a G1 at 8 furlongs. She's got one at 9 dirt. Let's see. She's got... Oh, wait. Yeah. She, she, is, she won her first... Or last year, she won... I mean, she was on a winning streak. Holy crap. So, she, yeah, she does actually have two wins at eight furlongs. Uh, my bad. She's got one nine. She's got one at ten. That's how she got the all-rounder, clearly. She's got one at twelve and a half. So, mild champ is our next step for her. And then she's got another one at twelve. Or, um... Is that a title in this game, though, to go for... I need to double-check. You guys probably know which title I'm talking about. It's the long-distance one, basically. Could she actually go for that? Let's see. Long champ. Okay, supposedly it's a title in this game. 12 or more. She's already got... Well, she's got two wins at a mile and two wins at 12. So, realistically, I could have her chase either or. Um... Hmm... second cup this is for the GWS turf she could go for that title I mean yeah I would like to get her a GWS win I think she needs that so yeah we're gonna go ahead and run her in the turf she's definitely capable of, of, of winning that this year for sure she blew desert diver and even link out of the water there by eight lanes so I, I don't think unless there's a new horse coming into that title picture I don't think anybody's gonna challenge us with her so Moonbee for you um, we need to get you back on the turf, and we need to get you into a G1. Now, as far as his titles are concerned, Moon has only got the GWS Sprint. So, I need to see how many G1s he's actually won. So, eight. They're only going to show me so many, but let me record as much as I can just to keep an eye on what we should be focusing on for him. So, he's got a... Let's see... Got a G1 at 10 on the dirt. He's got one at 6. I think I was going for the sprint, right? He won 8. He's probably going to have a pretty varied range of, of wins. Got the, uh, the 6 furlong. So sprint champ, which I think was probably my goal with him anyways. But he's also got another miler in there. 2 for the mile, 2 for the sprint that we know of. So I could really send him, at, and then there's still three other G1s I can't even remember. I didn't keep track, so I would guess he's closer towards the mile title, mile champ. We've already gotten him a GWS. I don't really, I, I don't want to go for the turf with him. So I would rather focus on getting him just more G1 wins, and we're going to go ahead and start that with the Regal S. So that's what we're going to do for Moon B, five, year, five years old. Um, who was I going to look at? Stargazing, Western Tiger, and Lee's Gold. Gosh, I should have kept. I really should have kept Western Tiger around, but it's all good. I mean, Cowboy's doing well enough. Tigress comes from Cowboy. Who else was I looking at? Honest Peg. Yeah, Golden Boy. So again, the pedigree here for Golden Boy. Western Tiger, man. That dude is a great sire. So, Golden Boy. I mean, we could definitely go for the GWS Sprint with him, right? I mean, I still think he's fast enough, and he has the stamina to make that work. It just depends on what's available, really. Mm. So next, Queen Mile. GWS Turf. 
you know, to have him and Butterfly Effect both going for that turf title could be nice. And he needs these wins anyway. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and run him in the Queen Mile. Let me go ahead and tally up his G1 wins as well. I can put these in my spreadsheet later. I could do it now, but my spreadsheets are all unorganized. That's why I'm just doing them in a notepad, then I'll transfer them over later. All right, so Azalea Cup. So that's 10 furlong winner. And he's got a Tokyo Derby, 10 furlongs on the dirt. Um, Paris Mile, so he's got a miler in there. World Mile, another mile. It's a mile champ title already, it looks like, for Golden Boy. We should be focusing on Long Beach at 9. He's actually close to the all-rounder title. I think I, I think we just need a win over 12 furlongs for this dude. Yeah. We need a win over 12 furlongs. And he could get the all-rounder title. So, I'm going to have to remember that for sure. Okay. Uh, did I put everybody in a race? Let me double check. Stargazing, you've been off. You only have one title, right? All-rounder, yeah. Tally up his G1s as well. Actually, before we get him into that next race. Alright, so... Alright, uh, so, stargazing. You had 15 furlongs. Probably going to be a couple of long ones in there for him. 10 furlongs for the China. Uh, 8 for the Miler. Diamond Cup didn't win that. London Miler got another 8. So probably Mile Champ title for him as well we're looking at. Okay. He's actually really close to mile, to that Mile title. 12... He's really close to the mile title. These are the only G1s I can see of him. He's already got three at eight, so he probably needs one or two more max. He's going to be an awesome sire, man. Cannot wait. So, yeah, let's get you a mile win in there if we can. Ten and a half. Don't really want to run him in that. Ugh. Can't run him for a while. Yeah. Lesser's, let me see, Caesars, no. Spring Mile, I might run him in that again, just because, like, I'm trying to get him that title, you know, that's an easy race for him to win, so we'll do that. Alright, let me double check that everybody's good. Uh, Formal Opera, alright, got it. So formal, um, hmm, we've got the GWS dirt with him already, which means we just need to go for a dirt title in general. So how many do I need for that dirt champ? Just five G1 dirt races. He's has he not won more than five? Okay, let's see. Louisville Derby, which is a Kentucky Derby. He won that. He won the Furras, the World Classic, the Tokyo Cup, and the Universal Cup. I think it's six in this game. Like, my spreadsheet has five, but, like, I swear it's actually six. Because that's five grade one wins on the dirt right there. So, he should be getting that title at his next dirt G1. Wherever that is, I'm going to toss him into it, but maybe a while. Oh, Caesars Cup, right? Is that the nearest one he can enter? Okay, cool. Caesar's Cup. That should he should win the title that day. All right. So, um, we got everybody all set up here, I believe. And uh, yeah, we should at least I, I want to at least try to get to June, preferably. It's kind of the goal. So, um, yeah, that's what we'll try to focus on in this episode. At least getting to June, or right before the two-year-olds make their debut. That's usually kind of where I like to try to end my episodes if I can. So we'll see. But taking a quick break and we'll be right back.
Alright, so, um... Yeah, like I said, I think we're... We're all good, really. Just want to check on some things right quick. Um... Turns as are so the lucky speed and okay speed up in normal races okay I just wanted to know what that actually said for like the the dream series about time man about time I think we're finally ready to get into that don't you guys think all right of course I'm assuming we're leading in everything as always Six, almost 70% win average so far for this year. <laughs> 15 wins out of 22 starts, man. In the zone. And we almost have close relationships with everybody except for Franck and Silver, which, again, like... Franck, I'm still disappointed in. Like, he just chose to just start being a hater for no reason. Silver, like, I've just never cared for. But I'm not against working with him if he eventually has good horses. It's just, like, he never has horses I want to work with. That's really the truth of it. Yeah, so anyways, uh, Black Ruby, she's up in the Cherry Cup. She should have a good chance of winning. Aunt B's here. Sudden Crop. I mean, yeah, those gals are... And Cattail, the second favorite. Anytime my horses that I lose are the favorites or, you know, expected to finish high, they never do. Cattail, where are you at? Gave her no tag, so she's not going to be easy to spot out there. I mean, she is from Western Tiger. She's flying Cowboy's sister, but uh, I'm not worried about Cattail. Aunt B, yes. Aunt Cattail, no. Game really just giving my horse favoritism. As if she's that strong. Like She should be, technically, but clearly I couldn't do enough to keep her around. And I still think the game took her away from me way too quickly. That's just the RNG part of it, but... Yeah, I just, I mean, I struck, I mean, I did get her two wins, and I felt like I was going to build some rhythm with her, but it, it still wasn't smooth sailing, not like Tigris of Stone. She was the easiest out of that group, but everybody else, you know, was still kind of a struggle, obviously. So yeah, number eight. Only one of my horses I've lost to is, like, Golden Boy, and that's because I forgot to put him in a race. I don't know if you guys remember that. He smoked us by, like, five lanes. <laughs> That's how I knew he was truly, really fast, because I was running on somebody else, and then the AI ran with Golden Boy, and they absolutely burnt us, man. Absolutely burnt us. So I'm like, okay, yeah, Golden Boy is the real deal when it comes to speed, for sure. Now, where's Aunt B? She's going to be way back there. No? Is she running mid-pack? Oh, yeah, she is a receiver. Why did, who am I thinking about? I think Aunt B was a closer. Bates. My guy will be running with Aunt B till forever, man. <laughs> okay, let's go. I got caught lacking a little bit. Okay, Cattail's actually competing with us. She's actually running with us. She might get past us, man. She's moving. Wow, Cattail. Okay. Well, she does have Western Tiger in her. That's a little bit of annoying. <laughs> so I'm going to finish in the top five and hit my goal. Cattail finishes in second. Oh, psh, okay. She kind of made me eat my words there. But good for her. Yeah. A length and a quarter. I mean, a length and a half off of Ant B. It's not bad. It's not bad. It is what it is. I mean, can't get her back, so... The one, she's like technically the second horse now that I've lost that's actually doing well when I'm not running with her. So, Ruby, uh, yeah, that was the Cherry Cup. We finished fifth. Not ideal. Like, she, like I feel like she's got to be able to win those races, you know. 
but I don't know. It might be better just to kind of keep her in grade twos or something like that. Young Mile, I want to keep this open because I don't know if somebody else is going to run in it. So I guess I'm going to run her 11 for a long... Wait, maybe? I can run her in the Paris 1000. I mean, I think... You know what? Hold on. I'm going to run her in the Kentucky Derby because I, there's, I mean, as a three-year-old, there's nobody else that can. Might as well. And she does have a good dirt rating, so who knows? That could actually turn out okay for her. It could. You know, I'm not going to hold my breath about it, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, nobody here in the Azalea Cup. Silent Speaker? Can I? Ah. Uh, see, this is the thing. Why do they tease you with this crap? And, like, every time I come down here, it's always another jockey on the horse. I can't even negotiate. It's so stupid. It's like, you really want you to lose a horse, you lose it. Like, you're never going to get a chance. Wait, Courtly Lark. Three years old. You know, I, I, I have I've been talking about getting Courtly, haven't I? I've been talking about getting Courtly. Oh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, he'll be another great sire to obviously add to the barn. I mean, add him to the list of Western Tiger, Desert Diver, Formal Opera, Diamond Plan. Yeah, Courtly fits in. Good stats, really good breaking, good heart, good distance, front runner. Don't like the growth type, though, but has solid abilities across the board. So, um, yeah. I, I didn't want to buy him, clearly, at the price that he was at, because he was like 100,000 points, so technically me testing with him here is a lot better for us, <laughs> until I have to do this several times, and that's when it will be a waste of time, and I could have just bought him in the shop, but, you know. I'm surprised that, like, he was, that he's still been available, really. Usually these really good horses, they just don't last for me long in my game. Like, they'll disappear from the shop or just something like that. So I just don't even really pay attention to it. Not like in other games, like 2003 or Galbracer 3, when I really want spe very specific horses. Like, there's nobody in this game I, I really, really want. Sure, there are still some horses I would like to work with. Again, like Fast Navy, Kramer's King, if I could. But I don't really feel like going through whatever I have to go through to unlock Kramer. So, Fast Navy would still be nice. Flying Glow, can you, like, relax, bro? I'm getting, uh, gonna go ahead and get Courtly off the rough. In our defense, though, the rest of them, they're still stacked, like, eight wide back there. If they weren't eight wide, they would be much closer, probably. They're, yeah. They're still bunched up five wide. That's so stupid. And then just us and Flying Glow. But at least it appears we're not running too fast. But I still don't like that we're this far ahead. I mean, Courtly Lark is a really strong horse. So I got to give him credit. If anybody can handle this, it's probably him. Stam's max. So They're really just sitting super far off. My goodness. I'll be shocked if Flying Glow there can keep up with us the whole way, but I don't know. I think that horse may have ran himself a little bit hard trying to keep up with Courtly Lark. I mean... Yeah, I don't think anybody's catching Courtly Lark, man. <laughs> Second wind. That's nice. I really should have just probably bought this dude because I, I mean, every time I went into the shop, I just kept saying like, oh, Courtly Lark, Courtly Lark. Like I knew I wanted to possibly give him a run, but I'm just like, we already have so many boys in the breeding barn or so many boys that we're going to be retiring for breeding. I just felt like it was just, you know, I just felt like we already had a lot going on there, but I mean, why would, I guess it'd be kind of foolish to pass up the chance of using Courtly Lark, wouldn't it? <laughs> Eight length winner. Well, I wonder how many more times I'm going to have to do that. I could have just bought him last year as a two-year-old. I was also worried about my points because I thought my six-year-old... I mean, I thought my six foals were going to be uh, racing this year, and I miscounted. They're not going to be here until the following season. So really everything with 
Corley Lark has just been me being a complete goofball, which is the usual, right? Lonely Bolero, the favorite on this six furlong open dirt race. Now that's interesting. Still not telling me his dirt rating. I mean, that's the thing, man. If we could try to, if we could get some dirt wins rolling with them, I feel like that would, that suits his stats better than running on the turf. I feel like the turf is just a little bit too tough for him, but I feel like he can actually, I feel like in this game, he, he, he would thrive better off of racing on the dirt. So. Because they're still not telling me his dirt rating. He has dirt in his pedigree. I don't think it's great, but it's probably okay, or maybe pretty good. That's what I'm hoping. Like, if it's at least okay or pretty good, then I know I can actually run him on the dirt. Wait, whoa, 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 what happened? Like I said, I'd rather hit those inclines. Well, no, we went down an incline there. I thought we were going to go up. Oh, man, I did not... What? I totally lost track of him there. That's my fault, so... No, this is just an open, but I could have botched that potentially. Still got last corner leader though. Maybe I just saved it. See, this is the incline I'm talking about. He loses so much ground, and the 10 is just on an absolute charge, man. And there's nothing I can do. Oh, that's my fault, man. I totally fell asleep there. That's what I mean. He needs the inclines on the back stretch. He needs to run up the incline in the earlier parts of the race. Thank goodness we hit our goal, but ah, botched that big time. Botched that one big time. That's annoying. Easy win and yeah, wasn't paying quite the attention I needed to, but uh, as always, races I wish I could have back. That's one of them. Still not telling me his dirt rating. Ran him. I've run him on the dirt three times. Um, four wins and 19 starts. He's definitely underachieving. So we can run him in the grade two Nagano. I think I'll give him a shot. I still, f I still have confidence that we can do something with him, but. At the same time, I've also had that same confidence with horses that just didn't turn out to be what I thought they were going to be. That's It's very possible that he'll be that horse no matter what I really do with him. Which, again, would be a bummer because, you know, you I'm not the only one, I think, that wants another great Bolero dirt horse back and, like, better. You know? And I think, like I said, the pedigree is still there. But, you know, for whatever reason, um... You know, Onyx Prince, he didn't do that great. Swab Buster, she was really strong, but usually Swab seems to work better with the really super strong sires. So, you know, Long Live Bolero, this guy, his stats aren't terrible. I mean, some of them aren't obviously what I want them to be, but like if I pair him with a really good broodmare, we could eventually get Great Bolero, a Great Bolero horse back. But that's the thing, it's going to take a lot of work. So, yeah, I, I really lost my opportunity to get Courtly Lark. I should have just, I don't know why I didn't just pay for that horse when I had the chance. Rural Derby, you have an okay growth type. Yeah, whatever. Even Link, can I test for you? I can. No abilities though. Hmm. Interesting. You know what? I'm going to run with Even Link. I want to see what happens here. I'm really just trying to buy out the competition. <laughs> I'm just trying to snatch these horses up just so they can't be a headache for me and my horses to win titles. <laughs> that's not intentionally what I'm doing, but that's what it feels like I'm doing. But I'm I'm just I'm at a point where I'm just like, "You know what? Let me see. Maybe these horses are going to be better to run with than I thought and maybe I would want to use them for breeding." Butterfly effect up in the second cup, top five goal. Velvet Apollo, the same horse she beat by several lengths, you know, in her last race. They're still giving so much favoritism to. 
I still got faith in my baby girl, so we're going to go ahead and plug away. Ah, yeah, long live Bolero. It's a bummer, man. Like, at this point in Great Bolero's career, he was already winning big races and grade ones on the dirt. Long live Bolero hasn't come close to that, so it's like... I mean, I feel like I'm going to retire him with very minimal achievements and that means i mean like i said i'm gonna have to use a crazy strong brood mare to get something worthy out of him as a sire because i just feel like we're, we're getting to a point now where if he doesn't start winning big races now i feel like long live bolero has just kind of missed his window i thought he would be a lot better but who is this cosmic fog could you relax bro you're just going to make me sweat with butterfly effect. For what reason? Who's writing? Capono, could you relax, man? That's annoying. I mean, we're not that far ahead, but I just feel like that horse wanted to just absolutely send it for no reason. You know? We're not going to get solo because she needs to be a couple more lengths ahead. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and send her because they're annoying me back there. <laughs> Where's Velvet Apollo at, anyways? Way back there. Okay. Can they give solo to me this late in the race, or does it have to happen earlier? No, I've gotten solo later. I don't know if they'll give it to me, but we'll see. No max down. I think she's okay. Oh, we do get it. Okay. So, yeah. That's good. And we'll get last corner leader here as well. There it is. There were a couple taps. Oh, no. Bears. No, 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 no. No, you're okay, Butterfly. You're okay. Why'd she get bears? Oh, what happened? That's never happened to me before. Why did she get bears? She wasn't even on a stam. Does that always happen? She's still going to finish third? Oh, no. My poor girl. What happened there? Seriously, what actually happened? I mean, she was supposed to finish fourth. She finishes third. We could have won that race. Wow. What on earth happened? I tap on the whip as soon as we hit, hit, hit the straight and she and bears. Is that how that's supposed to work? Or is that some weird thing? Even Link is up, the favorite. I'm still stuck on what just happened with Butterfly Effect. They just snatched that win away from us. I mean, she was on pace to win that race, 100%. And I thought Bears... Bears has only activated in this game for me when my horses have obviously been depleted of their stamina. And then I've continued to push them beyond that, usually with the whip. Ugh. That's confusing, and it's probably just because I'm not understanding it completely, but I, I know what Bears is. It's just I've never had it happen going up a hill on a, you know, in the final stretch with a horse that still has more than 85% of her stamina left. 90%, really. Like I said, she was in real good condition. I've never had Bears activate like that, so that's that's really weird, man. That, that just kind of snatched the race. How is it that Butterfly Effect is such a strong and good horse and then something like that happens and it can almost ruin her race from a win? And you know what? I didn't even realize I could still keep whipping her once she was still wild. I just figured like at that point if I whip her now, she'll drop even further. So I laid off. I mean, I didn't want to touch the whip at that point. So that's a really strange one. I, I don't... I'm worried about that. Like, I don't want that happening if we have other races like that, you know? Then I'm going to have to figure out why and... The thing is, she's won races like that on those type of tracks before, and we haven't had bears happen in that type of scenario. That feels like a little bit of RNG to me, me. RNG to me. And I mean, like, bad RNG. Like, we've run her in that exact position several times, and that has not happened. So the fact that it just happened in that race, that, that's odd to me. It's very odd. Like I said, I'm worried about it because I don't want that taking race wins away from us. That would be such a heartbreaker, man. That would be such a heartbreaker, man.
Here we go. Even link. Doing even link things so far, but the one is closing. Maybe not. Maybe even link is, uh... Who is that? Spy Sweeper? Spy Sweeper is going to sweep by and sweep us. Thank goodness even link's not my horse. Crazy to think this horse destroyed the GWS turf last year. It's a good horse. Don't get me wrong. I felt good with the horse. We hit our goal. It's fine, but... I didn't feel anything super crazy from that horse. Didn't feel like Diamond Plan. Didn't feel like Formal Opera. Western Tiger. Nothing like that. So I'm just like, how does... To me, a horse, he's... To me, he's beneath them. Even though the game will probably say he's better. Um, yeah, Butterfly Effect. She did get four points uh, for the GWS turf. Able to pop... They snatched that race from us. That's such crap, man. That's such crap. He was... We were, we were, we were going to win that race. And they just... Took it away from us. Like, ugh, that's annoying. Oh, it's really annoying. Um, yeah, I need to read that ability again because that, that's like. <laughs> that's like, what actually just happened? Now, let's see. Is Courtly Lark back? No. Who is that? Empty Treaty? No. No abilities. Whatever. I know I don't need a horse with abilities all the time, but I prefer for a horse to have at least something it can pass on. If it has no abilities, it's just like a... X-Factor, should I get her back? Or get him back, excuse me. thinking about Scabbit, but with this guy... Oh. He's got really good stam. He's got a nice distance. His girl type is whatever. Second wind? Hmm... That's what I mean. Too many boys. Already too many boys, man. I, I need to relax, honestly. Spirit close. Hmm. Huh. Sacred power? Closer. Fast growth type. Okay, abilities. Nah. Gosh, where, where are the brute mares and the fillies that look like this, honestly? Why is it just the boys? What is this game saying? Easy traffic. Sustained, good stam, terrible speed. I'd want to breed that up. Easy traffic. That's, hmm. I'm going to pick up easy traffic. Well, I'm going to try to negotiate a ride, obviously. Just to see. Um... Yeah, just to see. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save. I think I'm gonna go ahead and end our end this part of my recording session just to get this all saved and moved over. All right, and so then I will um, keep rolling we're on. back. I decided to go ahead and uh, ride for one of uh, Frank's horses, and it's gonna be who was it? No, it wasn't Ardent Moon. Um. Which race? Oh yeah, Louisville Derby. I decided to go ahead and ride for Quiet Sound. A real closer with a fast growth type and uh, pretty good speed and not bad stamina. Like, really. So I'm like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. See if we can improve the relationship with Franck a little bit. Because me and Franck used to be really close. Then all of a sudden, just like he didn't have any horses for me that I wanted to ride. And then uh, he just started hating Anyways, easy traffic. I also decided to give him a ride here in the King Cup Spring. Second favorite. I'm trying a couple of these guys out, even though I feel like we already have an abundance of boys. Like, I'm just making it worse, you know? But it's not even my fault. Like, the game is just not giving me enough girls to work with. It's really not. Like, I, the only chance I have with a lot of girls is through my own breeding, because the shop only drops one or two decent fillies you would even consider using per year it's like i can actually get more than that from breeding you know it's like the game just isn't giving me the really strong girls that that it should be the same ones keep popping up Ant b has been there like Ant b is giving me strong horses but not our strongest ones you know lee's gold has given us our strongest horses so far and like her irish fleet like none of those type of Phillies are popping back up, which is weird. Like, they've been gone from my game for a while, and I don't know if it's because I'm already... because they're in the breeding barn. I don't know how that works. 
Like, I don't know if they would have to be retired in order for them to... Like, if I would have to retire them from breeding for them to pop back up, maybe. Scabbit hasn't been back in my game in quite some bit of time. Now, she's somebody I would actually like to pick back up again because she's so freaking reliable. And she's just so easy to work with, really. Now, like, if I saw Scabbit pop back up in the market, I would actually acquire her for sure. Because, again, she's reliable. Like, she's a broodmare I know I can trust. Like, I don't want to get a broodmare that I have to kind of figure out if I can trust. And then it's like, oh, yeah, well, that was a waste of time. Like, Scabbit's reliable. And any of the super special fillies, they, they haven't popped back up. And I still don't want them to have bad stamina. Like, I don't want to get any girls with bad stamina anymore. Like, I want the baseline to be built with them. It's easy to find a good cult with good stamina in this game. The fillies are few and far between. So it's like, I'm not getting any filly that doesn't have good stamina already. Like, the only exception would be if she had ridiculous stats and like really good abilities then it's like okay i can sacrifice the stam for a bit of time and make sure i pair her with like the strongest stamina sires but th again those fillies are far and few between so it's like you know there's just not enough options it just bothers me because like you want good brood mares obviously the sires are important but to me i think a really strong brood mare is uh is underlooked I think it's easy to get a really strong sire, but then like getting that really strong filly that you turn to a mare, or you continue to race as a mare, and then, you know, like that, that, like she needs to be really strong. Really strong. If not, sometimes, obviously, I think your horses can suffer a bit more. At least for me. I feel like personally, when my brute mares are not strong enough, the offspring typically suffer in some way, but I feel like if the brute mares are relatively close to the sire strength, that's when you get those really strong super horses to me. So, you know, that's just me, but everybody's different. So, I'm supposed to win this race. No, I'm supposed to finish second, and that's the favorite X Factor. Okay. X Factor is kind of good, so. Fighting back very well here. Oh, X Factor. Wow, called it a day, huh? <laughs> X Factor called it a day. We're going to fly by here with Easy Traffic, which is kind of what Easy Traffic does. <coughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. <coughs> I was debating between racing with X Factor or Easy Traffic, and clearly I made the right decision because Easy Traffic is a better horse, in my opinion. No shade to X-Factor. I love that horse. We've used him. Very early game we used him. So, uh, yeah, it's good stuff right there. I'll take it. <laughs> Toxic Blonde. We decided to give, put her in a G1. Again, she's the long shot. That's... Is she really just not that type of horse? They're still not telling me her dirt rating, and I don't think she did well on the dirt. She has 70 power, though. Maybe we still need to try it out more. Only stat I don't know is her breaking. So, I, I, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think, well... Yeah, I don't know. She doesn't have any auto abilities, which means she has no, like, counterclockwise or clockwise not good. So, why is she still the long shot here in a race like this? I don't understand. I really don't. That's just kind of leading me to believe that she's just really not that good, and Blue's Breeze is a dud of a sire. Which would be a little bit of a bummer, but we'll see. Maybe not. Maybe I'm still acting too too quickly here. Not to say the game is always right when it's giving us favoritism, but usually, if, you know, you get a couple of spots off of, like, the top favorite. You feel comfortable, but when you're the long shot... So the game is really saying, like, yeah, you and your horse are not meant for this race, or just the horse isn't, or whatever. So I don't know. That's the thing, I don't know. Like, I just, I mean, she's almost near her peak. Like, she's not going to have a sustained growth type, so I'm just kind of curious, like, what type of races she needs to be in. Like, can I only run her domestically? Uh, don't, don't, don't go mad. You, you were just running too hard. Relax. Okay. Did not want to upset her beyond that. So 
gotta get her going now, because we got a long way to go. I mean, she's holding pretty nicely here, which it's kind of weird. Okay, she's holding really nicely. She was. Oh, this incline is going to be tough, though. She's still fighting strong. You know what? She's still fighting strong. Close race, okay. Toxic Blonde. She's going to do it. <laughs> she's going to do it. <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? Toxic Blonde just ended up... I don't... I mean... I'm at a loss for words. She just won the Britain 1000 Gs. As the long shot. Look at those dividends. That trifecta off of a $2 wager would have paid you over $2,700. Almost three thousand dollars for a two dollar trifecta wager. If you played that, even if you box it, it'd be what six bucks. I mean, we got a good jump and we held it, and she just won her first grade one. Ah, I mean, th this is what I mean. Like, I, I didn't understand why she was the long shot in that race. Was I expecting a win? No, but I thought that would have been a better suitable race for her. And I think, like, her stats are okay. The game just, I mean, that was off of no revolution. And that was, like, on merit. Like, we, we got the jump, and those horses struggled to keep up until the end of the race. Like, watch, now when I throw her in G1s, they're going to give her favoritism. Like, why couldn't she just... They could have given me, like, an 8th or a ninth. You know, that would have been better. But to say I was supposed to... We were supposed to finish in dead last, I feel disrespected, bro. I feel super disrespected. Black Ruby, she's actually the favorite in the Derby. The Kentucky Derby here today. I wasn't expecting that. Um, surprising beats here. Bright prize, they're cold. Well, whatever. They're supposed to both finish third. Flash Ocean. It's a very strange field of dirt horses. Or, I mean, the Kentucky Oaks. I mean, if she's supposed to be the best three-year-old girl in this class, at least the Phillies on the dirt, that's... That's not bad. So, yeah, she wins the Kentucky Oaks here. That'll be a good start for this season, this campaign. But, um... Toxic Blonde, I mean, like... <laughs> That race is going to have to shoot her up to at least an A ranked or S. She was B ranked going into that race. She might jump up to A or S. That's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I've i been saying it for the last couple of episodes. I feel like I'm getting better with her, getting in more rhythm. Her stats are still not great, but I think in those situations, she can still definitely find a way to win. Still not 100% confident in Blues Breeze as a sire. I mean, obviously, I know I still have, I think, another fall from him coming. Or that's already here. You know, I still don't think he's the best. But Toxic Blonde shouldn't be a bad horse because Lee's Gold is her mother. And Lee's Gold has given us awesome foals across the board. Like, you know? So even if Blues Breeze is not the greatest sire, I still think Lee's Gold was strong enough to have that pass on to her daughter toxic blonde and i think we finally got to see glimpses of that really shades of that in that g1 win there because that that's the type of thing lee's gold would do you know maybe in a race where it was a really competitive field i would find a way to win with her in those situations i just yeah i don't understand why they just they gave us no no love at all like, why are people always wanting to disrespect me and my horses in this game? That is crazy, man. It's really wild. It's like, it's not like they're terrible horses. I could understand if they were. They're not bad. They're not the best, but they're not bad. We got a really good run here at Black Ruby. I'm feeling good. No, Rebo, I don't think she needs it. She's got a really good run off of turn four there. Two is still keeping us company on the inside. Furlong left to go. One is starting to shoot up here, but I think Black Ruby, she's just going to be able to hold on here. And win the Kentucky Oaks as expected. Close race, though. Phillies all kind of kept up with each other. Nobody was really staggering too far behind. So that, that, was, a, that was a tough field. Good race.
big win for Black Ruby. That's what I mean. I mean, she needs to have results like that so we can try to work on a title with her at least. That'd be nice. So we can get Dirt Champ with her. That'd be cool. And like I said, maybe breeding her with Long Live Bolero could be worth it. But he's got to pick it up too. I mean, both of them would... I think they both would need a title for it to be really worthwhile. Um, doesn't mean I won't try it if they don't. But I think that would help improve the chances that they can maybe have a good dirt horse. But we'll worry about that later. Quiet Sound. Uh, I'm running with him in the Kentucky Derby. And he's the favorite as well. So this horse... Closer, real closer, has the closer ability, so this should be quite the ride here to win the Kentucky Derby on a closer. This is like rich strike territory. Only difference is we're actually expected to win. Rich Strike wasn't even expected to finish anywhere. Actually, Rich Strike was expected to finish pretty much in last place in the Kentucky Derby. So that's the only difference here. We're actually supposed to win because everybody does understand and know this horse. Rich Strike was a late last minute entry. They're already working on a film, apparently. No shocker there. I hope it's not too, like, over-dramatized, but I hope they make it uh, realistic in sense of how the connections involved felt and just how the crowd felt, too. I mean, a lot of people that weren't even into horse racing were just talking about Rich Strike winning. It was definitely one of the coolest moments in Triple Crown history, for sure. And it's going to go down in history like that. But, you know, certain movies, they'll, they'll take something and, like, kind of over milk it to the point where like it doesn't feel genuine you know you're like okay now the yeah this is definitely just a hollywood-esque movie because they're just going too crazy about it and they're not doing it authentically like i think that's very important that's what makes those movies great movies it's the fact that you still and still you know you still place that emotion in there is what i'm trying to say you keep the the raw emotions of what happened while not going over the top and still continuing to tell a great story. I think that that's what makes the difference there. And you've earned the respect of your viewing audience because they realize you were trying to pay as much respect to the original events as possible and you're not trying to put your own over-dramatized spin on it. That's where you lose the audience, when they can tell, like, okay, they're just trying to do something they don't need to do. So I'm moving quite sound up now. I think this is the time to get him going because we have a long way to go. We're very far back, but if anybody can do it, I think it's this dude. Let's see how he runs. Got a really wide. There's closer. Nicely. Down the stretch, we come in the Kentucky Derby with the favorite quiet sound. And if we can keep this up, I think this race is all done, set, match. It's over. Two back-to-back -back wins for horses here for us that we don't even own. Well, Black Ruby we do own. We win the Kentucky Oaks and we win the Kentucky Derby in the black, yellow, and green silks of the HRG stables. Let's freaking go. It's an easy dub, though. Easy dub. I like that horse a lot, man. That's an awesome ride on the dirt. Quiet sound, bro. If I can acquire you, I would snatch you up. You'd be a great dirt horse to work with get a good line going with him and black ruby that could actually be quite kind of dangerous kind of scary i'm kidding it could be decent right if i could acquire him and i already have black ruby if i could dominate with both of them on the dirt we could get a really strong dirt horse out of them for sure no doubt wow stack the wins there two in stable two out of stable that we're trying to acquire well, for the sake of old times, I can't offer you a writing request yet, but I'll look after you. All that means is he doesn't hate me anymore. Look, distance. <sighs> All right, bro. Um, Black Ruby. Yeah, she's tired, but she got her first G1 win, and that was on at the Kentucky Oaks. So that's a big win for her. So, yeah, she she's not doing badly here. I want to kind of keep her on the dirt if I can. Tokyo Derby? I mean, unless there's another dirt race for her. Actually, that Virgo Stakes, I might feel more comfortable with her doing that. Or the group, yeah. Then again, what would be easier for her to win? I'm going to keep that Tokyo Derby open. I'm going to go ahead and slide her in the London. No. Want her on the dirt. There it is. No, not the Griffin. There it is. The Virgo S. Nine furlongs. It's right up her wheelhouse. She should be able to handle that. 
So she's going to rest now, as she deserves. They want Tigers of Stone and the Golden Oaks. We're already set. Toxic Blonde. Not giving my girl enough respect, apparently. It was her only her third win, but it's a grade one. 44 breaking. Not like she needs it. Yeah, her stats are very, like, blah. Only thing is her speed will probably hit 80 here soon. Other than that, she's really below average for a double S horse. Um, you you remember me saying that she was at B ranked before that race. It jumped her up to a double S. <laughs> Winning that race as a long shot jumped her from a B ranked to a double S ranked horse. I haven't had a horse have that big of a sweep, I think, ever. And, like, her stats are not double S ranked at all. Her pedigree, maybe, combined. And her abilities are okay. Her stats are not double S, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> so... Yeah, she runs... Still don't know her dirt rating. 1,000 Gs at 8 furlongs. I mean, we can get another race like that. We might as well. And we can, and she'll be ready for it, and it's the London Crown. I mean, let's run her back. Maybe they'll pay her a little bit more respect there. Now seeing what she can actually do. Maybe they'll be like, oh, yeah, we should actually maybe give this girl a little bit more respect. But knowing my luck, they're just going to continue to trounce on us until we've made it abundantly clear we are the best horse in the field. Now, do I think she's capable of that? Possibly. Do I think it'll happen? I don't know. Probably more on the unlikely side that she gets to that point, but maybe she will. I mean, Moonbee has surprised the heck out of me. He's overachieved more than what I thought, so it's very possible. All right, there's nothing for us here. Uh, nothing for us here. I know I can just go to the schedule, but I don't feel like doing that. I know you're challenging me, you know I'm not going to accept it, why are we even pretending, let's just move along. <laughs> right. <laughs> Alright, Tigress of Stone, she's up in the Golden Oak, she should be the favorite, Aunt B is here. Remember, Aunt B beat us in our first year as a two-year-old, but we're getting stronger now, and I think Tigress is in a good spot to challenge Aunt B, but look who's post position number 10. Cattail. She's back. And she was tough. She beat us the last time out, right? So it's it's going to be the same group of girls, man, this whole three-year-old season. Us, Aunt B, and Cattail, at least on this domestic circuit. I don't know if they'll take Cattail to the international. I feel like I don't see my own horses on the international level. I never have. Maybe just because they're not that good yet. Typically, if you have horses that good, you just don't lose them. But, yeah. Aunt B and Cattail here both. So, I mean, we're going to have to be careful. This is not an easy win because they've both beaten us before. <laughs> but Cattail's still getting stronger. I know she probably has a fast growth type, but her power rating jumped from 81 to 83. So she's still just about getting to her peak. This is her race to win. This be a really good race to win. Let's see if we can get it done. The horses are on the track. Wait, we get it, dude. Uh, imagine if this game actually had like play-by-play -play commentary at that point. Would that have helped the experience feel more realistic, or would it have actually annoyed you and taken away? I'm curious. Because I don't know about that one. Like, I love play-by-play -play commentary, but games that have had it, it eventually got annoying because it just got too repetitive. Like, it would have to be a really in-depth, immersive play-by-play -play commentary. Like, if anybody has ever played, like, a sports type of game, you know, like, I don't know, soccer or something like that, the play-by-play -play commentary is usually pretty immersive. But I feel like for these type of games, for this type of game, it would be kind of hard to do. I mean, technically, Rival Stars has it, and it's not terrible. Like, I don't think the Rival Stars play-by-play -play commentary in the race is bad. I know that the, there's an old game on the Xbox, Breeders' Cup. That game is so easy. I've played that before. It's just a good nostalgic game to play, but, like, if you're trying to get any real value out of it, you'll get bored so quickly. It's, it's super easy. That game is play-by-play -play racing commentary with the actual horse's name, since it was licensed by, I think... 
I forgot what the company was, or I don't know if it was the Breeders' Cup, uh, just event themselves or somebody else, but that was an officially licensed horse racing game, like TVG or something, I don't know. Um, and then Starter's Orders has it too, but for the most part, they all feel clunky. Like, I, I genuinely believe Rival Stars has the most fluid play-by-play -play currently, based off of if you... You know, if your horse's name actually can be read by the commentator. But, yeah, I don't know if, like, playing Gallup Racer with, like, play-by-play -play commentary would help the experience or, or take away from it. I'm very curious. Okay, got to get Tigris going now. I'll make sure I get her on the jump. Good. There we go. Good jump. Very good start there for Tigris. And Revolution. Smoking this field. Let's go, baby. And B's keeping up with us, but that's it, man. That's it. And Cattail got smoked, too. Tigris a stone. I hate doing the whip like this, you guys know, but I'm going for the record. I'm going for a big win in the Golden Oaks. Oh, my gosh. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Tigris a stone. That pedigree's finally coming through. <laughs> I said butterfly effect, watch out. Tigris of Stone is coming for that place. She really is. She is coming for that spot. She's one year younger than her stable mate, butterfly effect. But my goodness, I'm telling you, man, we got some good horses here at the HRG stables. I'm going to need a little bit more respect. She wins that by 11 lengths. I know we were the favorite. I wasn't expecting an 11 length win especially since we struggled i mean we lost to both of those horses cattail and amp in the last grade one i was not expecting to come back and destroy them by 11 lengths and i still think without the revolution we still would have won that by at least three or four probably we had a really good start she was able to coast she has plenty of stamina she's strong enough she's the brood mares i've been wanting her and Butterfly Effect both. I'm actually blessed. Like, I don't have to stress about looking for one in the game because they're pretty much those girls. And it's a perfect race. Of course. <laughs> she absolutely destroyed that one, man. So, Tigris, that's her second grade one. She's building a nice, nice portfolio already. Moonbee's up in the Regal S. Going for that mile champ title with him. He's already got two wins at eight. Third favorite, Velvet Apollo. I don't think that horse is that good. I'm so sick of them giving it favoritism. That horse only beat us that one race because Butterfly Effect just got bears all of a sudden into the stretch without, with having all of her stamina. Regardless, I don't think Velvet Apollo is that much. I don't think he's that good of a horse. I know he's decent, but I feel disrespected again. But, you know, Moonbeam, let's see what he does. Still on the decline, but he's still strong enough to win this race, so I could care less what the game says. Yep. Yeah. Tigris of Stone blew that. Keep in mind, this is a horse that the game was saying was going to be a bad horse. They gave her awful stats and totally downplayed her compared to the other two-year-olds that were hitting the track for the first time. They gave her the worst rating, and ironically, she's still only one of the two of that group that are remaining. Shocker, right? <laughs> You know, that should tell you something. She's a good horse, clearly. All right, Moon, let's see what you got, brother. I mean, I, I swear, I bring it up every time I race with Moon. I cannot be the only one surprised that he's done a lot better than what we were probably expecting. I wasn't expecting... His level of consistency and dominance for a point. I was expecting like a better than King B and Gemstone. A couple more grade ones. No GWS really. That's what I was expecting. Not when Moon has actually shown us. Which is that he can run with most of the big dogs in any category. At least for the sprint or the turf. He's won races in both. So he's certainly not a pushover of a horse. Despite what his stats may look like. Let's go, Moon. Let's go. No Rebo. No Rebo. I don't know if we're going to get last corner leader. Probably not. I'd be surprised. Now, he's still fighting strong, man. Come on, Moon. 
You can hold this five off, brother. This is what I mean, man. Moonbee is still a tough horse. He's holding on. He's holding on. Come on, Moon. He's gonna get there. <laughs> what was I just saying, people? What was I just saying? What was I literally just saying? What was I literally just saying, man? <laughs> this guy has overachieved. Pink Gemstone and King B made an absolute stud here in Moonbee. Like, he's really a prime example of, like, when breeding goes well from, like, two horses that are good. And then they actually create, like, a really strong horse, which is ideally what we all want. Like, we want to know at the minimum if we take two good horses, we could get a really strong horse. That's really what King B and Pink Gemstone have done for us in Moon B. Weren't supposed to win that race. Holds on strong to win. <laughs> Another grade one for Moon. Like, guys, th th that's what I mean, man. He's still so tough. He can still run against some of the best horses that we're running against so far and win. He's proving that. He is proving that. And his stats aren't even that fantastic. That's the even more impressive thing. It's like we're just so in, in sync with one another. Oh, is that it? The Mile Champ title. There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Second title here for Moonbee, Mile Champ title. His parents got no titles. Not that I was title chasing, but I don't I think it would have been hard still, possibly. Because King B didn't win that many G1s. I don't think so. Didn't have a lot of time with him, you know? He was he was done by this time. King B. Mile champ title there for Moonbee. That's his second title after winning the GWS sprint as a three-year-old. This guy is. I mean, like he won the GWS Sprint actually as a four-year-old. I take that back. He won that as a four-year-old. Look at his stats. I mean, they're not great, you know, but the fact that he has these type of stats and he's able to win the way he's able to win, that's his, that was his 15th win, ninth grade one win, and his second title. Like, his stats aren't even reflective of what he's really doing on track. Two titles for Moon. <laughs> so proud of him, man. He is really just... I mean, look at these stats. They're not great. Look at the feel. Look at the temper. Look at the response. Those are not good. You know, and of course, he, he peaked early, early-ish. Peaked just about, just right before his four-year-old season. But it feels like he's actually gotten better, doesn't it? You know, I feel like he's gotten a little bit better as he's aged. And he's okay with turf or dirt. And, you know, if we just look at his pedigree here, I mean, he's got two, I mean, he's a true third generation horse here. Like a King B side, you have Desert Diver and Ant B there. And then if you look at Pink Gemstone side, you have Night Breeze and Arctic Crop, who I really wish I would have gotten more out of. I know not every Arctic Crop horse worked out, but I think if we, I would have used him with stronger brood mares, for sure we could have gotten pink gemstones and even better without a doubt but yeah moon is a true third generation horse here on both sides which is fantastic so like i said i think that's reflective in just how he races despite the fact that his stats are nothing great and his only really good ability is stretch burst you know and then of course if he's on those south paul light tracks then he also performs well but look at those stats they're not great <laughs> but he's got a lot of heart and that's the thing. This, this family of horses, they all had heart. Every single one of them. Aunt B, despite her temper, she was very gutsy. You know, she wasn't a horse to get discouraged. You just had to keep her under control. Desert Diver, of course, had heart. King B and Gemstone. Gemstone, to me, had the most heart. That's where that guts comes from. Arctic Crop. Arctic Crop is that type of horse. So that clearly is all trickled down into moonbee and he's showing that he's keeping that alive this is a very gutsy type of horse racing family here every single one of these horses were very gutsy had a lot of heart they wanted to win they wanted to do the best that they could and that matters man goes to show you king b is a prime example of that so we gotta get him in another <clears throat> well he already won the mild champ now i think about it so what do i do with you then i feel like the mile champ now secured it's like i can we can go for a sprint title we can go for a mid champ if that's even in this game i feel like it's quite a bit 
GWS. I mean, I could get him back in the sprint. But you know what? Let's just go ahead and run him in this Pluto first. He's, I mean, he's 70, it's 77 speed and staying. Like, he'll stay that he'll stay that fast in the stretch if I, you know, manage his stamina. Like, he's still fast enough to win a lot of races. So, um, yeah, we're going to keep rolling with, with Moon, man. Like, two, yeah, he's definitely overachieved. Way more than what I ever really thought he was going to be able to do. Now, Tigers of Stone. They're finally starting to give her a little bit more respect. She's got two back-to-back -back wins in the Australia and the Golden Oaks. Her first two G2 wins. Or G1 wins, excuse me. As a three-year-old, so she's coming into her own. But look at her stats. Like, why is the game disrespecting me and my horses all the time? It's actually really annoying. It's, like, really annoying, man. It's like, they'll give me better favoritism on horses that aren't actually that good. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Um... I mean, she sh I'm feeling confident with her. I think we might be able to toss her into a uh, a GWS race whenever, but that's not going to be until the summer sprint. In July, I could hold her off to that, but I mean... Hmm. Rather still run her in something else. Ten and a half for the Lion Oaks? Or the Britain Oaks? What's her stamp? 73... I kind of need to see what she's capable of running because I don't want to shortchange her distance if she can actually handle 12. Like, I don't want to miss out on good races for her if she if she's capable of running 12. So... What races was I just looking at? Wait, wait, wait. Good thing is she bounces back really quickly between races, so we don't... Okay. Um... The Britain Oaks, I mean, that's a bigger race for her probably to win. Let me see, between the Lion. Yeah, I got to see how she runs 12. I, otherwise, I'll never know. I think now is a good time to really see. I mean, that G1 win for Toxic Blonde jumped her ahead of her stable mate. Like, these two girls are technically competing against each other as three-year-olds. <laughs> Toxic Blonde wins one race as a long shot, and the game just sends her to double S. Like, what on earth? Tigress of Stone has actually been doing pretty well. And she's still only S ranked. Like, this game makes no sense. My gosh. Corley Lark's back. Yeah. Oh, I don't have to pay anymore. Ah, so you see, this is the cheaper route. You pay that one time to request, and then. I mean, Corley Lark is solid. So, Sound Speaker is going to be in the field. <laughs> I wanted to keep working with that horse, but like it, his stats and his leg types. He's one of those horses where just too much incompatibility. For sure. I haven't seen you in a while. She hasn't challenged me or said anything to me. Or she's going through her phase where like she's starting to dislike me again. Hopefully not. That was annoying. You guys remember that? She just always just hated on everything we were doing. Like, she was like a Turner. Like, she was like the Turner before Turner became Turner. You know, like, Turner would just only say little things here and there, but prior to him becoming the most annoying character we deal with now, it was always Dean being just absolutely obnoxious, man. And the thing is, she was actually good at racing us, too. So, like, she was extremely full of herself. You know, like, Turner's never been good in my playthroughs to, like, be competing with me in races like usually he just ends up falling way out of it but like dean is i mean look at her she's on the second favorite here rainy rhythm like she's a much better ai jockey in my game as far as like who i'm competing against so that's what made that whole thing with her annoying because like she was able to back up her 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 annoying nonsense but it you know it was just yeah it was just really ridiculous to deal with it's like dean relax you know, we had, like, a real rivalry with her going on. Like, we would win, she would win. We would, you know, it was legitimately back and forth. And she, I know she beat us, like, two years, I think. I was trying to beat her, and obviously to win those uh, jockey titles. And I know she definitely beat us at least one to two years. So, yeah, you know. It's quite the story with that girl. Now, supposedly, we're, like, really close friends, and I'm just, like... Mm-hmm. I see you. 
like I don't hold grudges so I'm like it is what it is if you're gonna be cool I'll be cool you know what I mean genuinely like she just took the heated rivalry far beyond the levels it needed to be taken it's not like she genuinely like hurt us but it was just very like immaturish behavior to me <laughs> you know she just like couldn't just relax Courtly, you're fine, bro. I know. You're fine. Relax. Flying Glow. Again? Is it just going to be us and this horse until they give us Courtly Lark? Like, I don't want to do that. Because <laughs> this dude always wants to go, like, 15 lanes out of the field. Ancient Victory? Yeah, calm down. Actually, I want to get this dude off the rough. What am I doing? Off the rough, please. I mean, I know I think he has the power to handle it, but still, I'd rather just avoid it when I can. Ugh, I hate the rough, man. Like, before I really understood that about horse racing, I always wondered why it seemed like certain jockeys led their horses more away from the rail even if they were in front i never understood it especially on turf tracks and even some parts of dirt tracks too like they're supposed to keep it smooth but they don't so certain dirt tracks like in fact my dirt track there's definitely a rough like a hundred percent and they race on that most of the time too and sometimes the winners win on it and sometimes they win you know obviously being off of it on the more softer part of the dirt so um it's very interesting but yeah, for the turf, it's like, you know, it's very interesting how that works. But yeah, I, ne I never understood why jockeys would lead their horses off the inside of the rail. Like me being a track and field person and just understanding just inside leverage is always good when it comes to racing. You know, having that inside line and that the, the shortest length around the track, that's obviously the best way to go. But then I started to realize, oh, sometimes horses don't want to be that close to the rail they have preferences sometimes obviously it's because the track has a rough on it then i started to understand i'm like ah there's a reason for that it didn't make sense to me in my immature mind at the time i'm like why are they not tucked to the rail man I'm like why are they running so far outside but then i understood it second one with corley lark we beat flying glow by seven lengths i mean this is what i mean like can they just give me the horse already i don't want to just do this against flying glow every race like that horse is not even close to corley lark it's just gonna be a waste of time and a boring race at that anyways long live bolero's up in a great two better odds seems like this is kind of his territory but you know what this is on the dirt so if we can try to get a little bit of a a swing going for him on the dirt that that would be nice because i still feel feel like the dirt would will benefit him more with his stats than the turf personally just me the horses are in the gate but yeah it's a little bit of a bummer things haven't turned out like i wanted with him not that it's too late, but I thought it would be happening by now. Like he's close to five and a half. He has a really, of course, late grow type. Like this, it was supposed to take this long for him to be in a better position to start winning races. But the thing is, I still feel like we should have started to win more than what we have. But I don't know. He could be really late. I mean, Great Bolero honestly was in a similar way. Like I feel like Great Bolero was still more consistent. I know we had some bad races with him, but I feel like I, I won more with him by the time he was five and a half, and then he really kicked in at six. I had a really strong campaign there. I mean, Long Live Bolero could potentially have that, but I just I'm not feeling it yet. So, winning here would be a good start. You know, winning here would be a really good start. Had to get him going now. Didn't get him in the right place there. Not going to get last corner leader, which I desperately needed. I uh, feel like I kind of blew that one for sure. He's discouraged. He's still pushing on, but I think we're just going to get caught here. He's fighting well on the dirt. I think we can actually make him work as a dirt horse, you know? Like, I could have won that race, but I totally mistimed that spurt. I just kind of fell asleep there for a second. 
So if I didn't do that, I mean, he's winning that race. I mean, it's a double S on the spurt he, on top of that, so. Yeah, I definitely believe that um, we could still make the dirt work with him. Honestly. It's going to be a grind, clearly, as we're seeing, but the good thing is I think it can work, which is the most important thing. Like, I'm feeling better with him on the dirt than on the turf, you know, again, because I think his stats suit him more on the dirt. He, Like I say, he's still growing. Not a lot, but his stamina's still improving, so... Yeah, I've... I mean, let's look at his last three dirt finishes. Okay, he didn't finish well in the February on that G1, but the last two... He was supposed to win that one, the six for a long, so that's a bummer. Um, yeah, he's got only nine finishes in the top 20 of his uh, start, so... He's less than average. Mm. I want him in this. I don't. I don't want him on the turf. I, I still feel like the dirt would work better. Personally, seven furlongs. I mean, he can run that, can he? Seventy-three speed. Yeah, he's. I mean, the game is gonna say he's not fast. I mean, he's not fast enough for that. But I think. I think if I run the race right, you, you can find a way to win on those shorter distances. Even if your horse isn't really built for it. It's all about timing and managing your stamina, getting a good break, establishing your position early. I know that sounds like a lot, but in those races, you just kind of have to do all that at the same time. So, um, Still not giving me... Uh, Round Saturn, I can actually test for. I mean, I know I had a chance to buy this horse last year, but again, this is a cheaper route. I don't have to spend so much money to make it happen. Fresh soul. Hmm. I, I'm doing something I don't usually do. I'm gonna ride with everybody because. See, this is what I mean. Dean just, just getting in the way. Like, no, you're not better than me. You haven't been better than me since I finally knocked you off of your uh, your podium. So, like, relax. So, if I win that race on that horse, that should improve me and Silver's relationship. I'm not really going... To, I'm not trying to do these things, like, intentionally. I'm just kind of bored, to be honest. And it's better than a jockey challenge. Like, and I said it before, in, I think in the last episode or earlier in this one, like, I don't mind occasionally looking in the shop trying to find a horse. I just prefer to keep the breeding in-house for most of it. But yeah, I definitely don't mind picking up a horse or two or trying some out like I'm doing now. Because in all honesty, like, there's, there's a really good class of three-year-olds out right now. Stargazing's up in the Spring Mile Cup going for that Mile Champ title. Moonbee just got his. Stargazing should be close to getting his. Yeah, he's got three that I counted at a mile. So I don't know if he could have four or five, honestly, but I can't go back that far and I wasn't keeping track, so. Good stuff. All right, let's make this happen with the stargazing. Star to the stargazing. Here we go. Okay. Who's even in this field? Anybody? Personal shells, like what? Regal Soul? I mean, we've beaten him several times now. I'm not worried about Regal. Yeah, nobody in this race I should be worried about, honestly. Granted, like, if I were to totally muff this up, then yeah, Regal Soul could be a threat. But. Dope. Stargazing. Relax, bro. Relax. See, this is one of those days he wants to just run near the front. And there goes Regal Soul. Like, I'm not. If he wants to run towards the front, like. I'm going to have to let him go eventually. 
We're max dam, so that's decent at least. We're running fast though, 11 6, 11 8. But yeah, today was a day he did not want to run towards the back of the field, and I'm not going to say anything about it to him. Like, if that's how you wanted to run, that's how he wants to run. Come on, star, bro. Dig in, brother. And who is this about to smoke us? Not a good race unless we fight back, but that horse just blew past us. What just happened? Well, then. That's um, that's disappointing, and that's a really easy race to win. I wish there was a retry in this game. Personal shells. We hit our goal, but that wasn't... Yeah, we weren't in the right position, but still, we that horse just blew past us. Like, we had the rest of the field beat. But, you know, <clears throat> probably the spurt. That was B ranked, so I could have gotten started sooner. Probably needed to actually for that last corner leader. I totally forgot about that. Anyways, Tigris of Stone is up in the Britain Oaks. This is our biggest test. She's about to finish second, so that's good. All right, technically, we're, she, we're co favorites of Bright Earth. Newman's on that horse. Fair play, fair play. Okay. I mean, yeah, I think she's capable. 75 stamps. She's still growing really nicely here. Yeah, she's super strong. Holy cannolis. I mean, for me. I know some of you have had... I Obviously, I don't have horses with the red stats yet. But we're getting there. I'm saying for where we are now, she's really strong. Honestly. Like, she looks even a little bit stronger than Butterfly Effect in some aspects. Flying Cowboy, man. He's got that Western Tiger power and strength in him. That really is going a long way. I cannot believe the game said she was going to be a flop. Like, what absolute disrespect, man. That's crazy. Game really tried disrespecting me, saying, oh, yeah, she's not going to be that good. Like, what? Man, the game just does anything at once, doesn't it? God Racer has, like, some sort of etiquette and, like, rules, and then, like, the other part of, like, the programming just decides to just do anything. Just goes off script, goes off code. Basically. Not a good start, but I think she's good enough to get to the front quickly. Yep, yep. Oh, we're going downhill. Actually, wait, wait, relax, relax. Oh, not that bad. Not that. No, oh, Tigris. No, 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 no. Oh, gosh. This is our first. This is a really big test for her. My goodness. Is this going to work? Oh gosh, this has been kind of a mess so far. Sometimes she's actually too responsive. <laughs> I'm just like, just slow down a little bit, then she slows down too much. She's one of those types. Oh gosh dang it. Yeah, she's really hard to control here, I'm not gonna lie. She's a little bit tricky, but I think I'm I got her now. Oh gosh. That was a headache and a half. Where's Bright Earth? Yeah. Well, that's the only horse I really need to worry about here. This is a big test for her. She's never ran a race this difficult before. I don't even think Butterfly Effect has run this race. I mean, she's handling it pretty well, but, uh, slow, 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 slow. This race is really tough. I have not done this in a while. I forgot how much managing you have to do with your horse, man. We gotta go now. We gotta go now. Oh, I kind of botched it. I botched the spurt, man. I botched it with last corner leader, but maybe she's strong enough to still dig in. Oh my goodness, I, I botched the spurt for sure, but she's digging in pretty nicely here. Bright Earth is still there on the inside. Oh, come on, Tigris, you got this. Come on. Come on, Tigris, hold on. Ah, oh, Bright Earth got us. Oh, what an effort, man, what an effort. 
I did the best I could. I definitely botched the spurt, though. If I would have gotten her last corner leader, I think that could have get, I mean, we lost by half, half a length, almost ahead. That's definitely why I think what cost us the win. Double S on the spurt. I mean, she fought exceptionally well. That's a big effort from her. Huge effort. Huge, huge, huge effort. I'm not mad at that. Still think it could have been a win, but, you know. Fresh holes up in the uh, Belmont Stakes here. I decided to give this horse a try because look at these stats. Normal growth type. A dirt horse. Decent abilities. Fresh soul. One of those guys I see all the time and I just didn't ever really think to check out in more detail. So here we are. Right. Here we are. So let's see if he can win the Belmont, eh? After we get through this uh, next section of races, that'll probably be it for this episode because I'm tired. And uh, yeah, I've recorded quite a bit actually. I've recorded at least five episodes at this point, or four. So this is the Belmont track, yeah. It's so weird. Like, Tecmo took the time to, like, accurately depict these real tracks. Like, this is, like, you know, Belmont Park. And then they decide to give Secretary a completely wrong, you know, tack colors. Like, but where's the balance, you know? And then they, you know, his light type. Like, where is the balance with your, your accurate depictions of real horse racing and not? Because, like I said, the fact that, like, the Kentucky Derby track, the Belmont track, the Preakness, you know, Churchill, like, all of those look realistic. And Secretary looks fine, except you just gave him the wrong colors, you give him the wrong, you know, pr primary leg type. It's just like no balance. No balance at all, man. Who's, I was going to say, who's the favorite we are? It's a good start here. Don't go full sending it now. Now you can turn up. Now you can turn up, bud. No rebo, but it's fine. I mean, we were under a dollar fave. We were paying what? Even money? Maybe like six to five? Like, yuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> Six to five, one to five, something awful like that. Yeah, that's a good horse, man. I don't recall seeing him in the sales last year, but I'm sure he had to have been there. It's a heck of a race horse, dude. Fresh soul, my goodness. For the dirt? It's giving me Desert Diver vibes for surely. I believe. So they ruler possibly. Round Saturn. Yeah, I decided to give this guy a try too. <laughs> um, another monster on our hands. I mean, my goodness, just adding all these sires. All the boys are doing really well, honestly. Like, the only one that hasn't done well is Long Live Bolero. In general reason. Outside of that, all the other boys so far have done pretty darn well. So, speaking of Desert Diver, Turf. What am I thinking about? Western? No. Getting my horses confused. What am I thinking about? That running gets on dirt. I thought it was a horse like Desert Diver. Just obviously dirt. Hmm. Because in all honesty, they're so similar. Like, they have the same level of dominance. They both run near the front. Like, a lot of the strongest horses in the game, they're very similar. They're not that much different. It's just a matter of one being stronger than the other. But outside of that, their stats and their running styles are pretty much 
Got a clone for one. Can we get in front, please? I'm like, figure out what you guys are doing up here, bro. No, that's my fault because I got a bad start, but still, like, my goodness. Relax, relax, relax. Um, like, what are we doing up here? Why are you still running five wide? Like, tuck in. The AI are so stubborn in this game, man. Like, they have to be in the perfect position to, like, move their horse. Otherwise, they'll just keep them running eight wide for, like, half of the race. It's like, my goodness, move. Just adjust. You're fine, brother. Round Saturn, very interesting dude, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Well. That's a nice pull away. Yeah, interesting. I didn't feel complete smoothness with him, personally. Not compared to Fresh Soul that we just ran on. But, you know, he was pretty compliant. Round Saturn, that's just such a cool name. It's not the picture I wanted, but whatever. Yeah, it's a good win for him. Five length winner. Double S on the stretch, yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. He probably maybe feels more like Desert Diver, honestly, I would say. Butterfly effect. She's up in the red flower. 12 furlongs. Eager Judge is the favorite. Let's go ahead and get this done. Let's try to get her another big win. This would be her third win at 12. So we're going for that long champ title. Because, um... Yeah, it's just... That's where a lot of the races are. and Guys, we've been running all of our horses on this course. I didn't realize we had like everybody here in Britain. <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> for this weekend. I was not really paying attention. But this actually works. Butterfly Effect needs to be in the lead. So if she's going to go a little bit faster at any given point. This is a good race for her to do it. Because like, I actually can keep her in front. Who is this Flying Glow? Oh, Cosmic Fog. I'm like, oh my god, it's not again. Okay, slow down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You're fine. Alright. Yeah, well, I didn't realize like I brought everybody here <laughs> to this. Basically, basically to this track, but it makes sense. She should get solo at some point. It's been a quiet race, man. I mean, what am I supposed to say, really? She gets solo. Shocker. Just making sure I keep her from going too crazy. No, it's a big drop off here, so I'm gonna have to really hold her back. Okay. Very nice, very nice, my girl. Very nice. I think she's fine. I think she can push. Let's go. You can push. You can push. What are you discouraged about? You haven't lost anything yet. She's so... Oh, she is really funny, man. She's a little bit of a brat. Just a little bit. Which is probably what I probably what I like a little bit about her because she she's at least backing up what she's doing <laughs> like my goodness <laughs> my goodness man
Butterfly Effect is, I think she's overachieving what Chasing Hearts did for us. Yeah, she's a little bit of a brat, but I mean, I'm not complaining because she is. She's everything I could have asked for so far. And she sets another record. Mainly just because it's, it's a race we haven't won before, which is kind of weird, it seems. Unless she beat that. No. She definitely beat that record. That was Desert Diver's record. I take that back. <laughs> she beats that record on merit. Yeah, Butterfly Effect, she's the real deal. I've been saying it for a long time. Butterfly Effect, for anybody that knows, is giving me, like, Blossom vibes from Powerpuff Girls, basically. You know? Bloss I mean, not Blossom. Uh, bubbles. Duh. Bubbles. Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls. Bubbles was adorable. Of course, she was a little bit of a brat, right? But Bubbles could also kick butt when it came to, you know, crime fighting. In Townsville, I feel like Butterfly Effect is like that way as a horse. She's very sweet, but also a brat because like she doesn't give me any issues during the race. She really doesn't. Like she's very easy to work with at the front. She's very happy when she's out clear in front. So like naturally, we work well together. But she has her occasional moments like that where like I guess the horses were too close for her in the stretch. By the time she got going, she was like ah. They're too close. I wanted to be further away. Like she really likes to like establish her dominance basically in the field. She likes to make it abundantly clear that she's the best horse by a couple of lengths. That's basically what she's communicating to me. I'm not complaining because she's been hitting it out of the park, so to speak. Well, let's get everybody in a race before I end up forgetting. So stargazing. Botch that last race with you. We gotta get you back in another eight furlong when we can. Tully botched his race. It was kind of annoying. Super Mile. I mean, I still think he's good enough to run in the GWS. Because he, he's... Yeah, he doesn't have a GWS title, so... Moon B, they want you in the Pluto. Okay, I already got you in that. Butterfly Effect. Eighth G1 win. At 12. Yeah, she's got the endurance for sure, man. It's like finally. <laughs> finally, finally, I have the horse. Um, Does she have any wins on the sprint? No, she has a one at six yet. So I'm, I'm going to diamond cut. Perfect. Impost might be too much. Really? Screw that. Man, I'm running her in that race. What is the Dream Cup? I don't even know when it is. Yeah, that was a really good effort in that Britain Oaks, man. Tigris fought as hard as she could, honestly. Yeah. She almost won that race, in all honesty. She was right there, man. She was right there. Okay, so yeah, it would've been nice for her to have won that, but I mean, she fought really hard, so I'm really happy. She's good enough to run in the sprint, but she could, she could run in a lot. I don't know what to do with her. The lead oaks. Actually, let me run her in the platinum. I think that's perfect for her. If I can get her into the GWS category this year, I think she's, yeah, she's good enough. What am I doing? She's good enough. Game still thinks Toxic Blonde is like the next superstar, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Just giving her the double S rating off of one grade one win as a long shot. Like, that could be her last big win, honestly. I mean, I hope not, but it could be. And, like, the game just gave her this double S rating for no reason. That would be really funny. But who knows? Maybe that's what she's more capable of at the, the mile distance, you know? Maybe. Hey guys, I think that's going to do it because I'm tired. Uh, it's already late anyways. Quiet sound. Yeah, I'm going to request this horse again. That dude is a monster. Um, him and Fresh Soul both. So, well, I'm going to continue riding them if they pop up. Wing Soul. Oh, that's a Colt. What am I thinking about? 91 Temper, not bad. Stats are blah. Um, thinking about a horse. Can't remember. Um, oh well. 
but yeah appreciate you guys for the love and support on the channel uh, as always and um i don't know when this video is even going up so i have no idea what my uploading schedule is going to be as far as you know videos or live streaming by the time this does go up um yeah no idea so i'm not even going to say what will be happening next but as always i appreciate you guys and uh i will see you in the next whatever we decide to do whether it's the galabrasa world cup um whether that started or not started this is what i mean like i don't know what it, what happened by that point um but yeah i'm excited for that to start with you guys if we haven't done so already and on uh, this game i mean we're we have a lot to go in june two-year-olds are going to be up here next month which will be vivid well i forgot their names already i'm destroying blanks but so two cults they'll be up so um yeah we're gonna have another busy episode or live stream whenever i come back to this game and Fortunately, all my horses are at least S and up, except for Long Live Bolero, who I don't think will ever reach S or double S, unless he starts winning grade ones in big ways. And the thing is, I think his stats are decent enough for him to be winning more, which is why I'm a bit disappointed, because only four wins out of 20 starts. I feel like he's better than that with these type of stats. I just don't know what's the best race to put him in. I still don't know his dirt rating. He runs 8 to 12. You know, still some unknowns. Just hard to figure out with this guy, and... Like I said, I mean, he's almost at his peak. And maybe he can keep that up. I mean, if it takes him till a six-year-old season to start winning, and then he can do that again for another year into a seven-year-old season, I mean, that that would be nice. Especially since he has a, such a long growth type. I don't know if he'll have a major fall-off. I don't think Great Bolero had a major fall-off. We were still able to do some good things with him after he hit his peak. So, the, I mean, Lala Bolero could be more on that trajectory, really. A strong six-year-old campaign and then maybe a little bit of a seven-year-old season but i still feel like he needs to start winning now halfway through his five-year-old season but we'll see everybody else is doing fantastic toxic blondes double s rating is still ridiculous to me like I, like if we can't do that consecutively with her right why would they <laughs> the game is so weird tigress of stone has been absolutely amazing and the game still only thinks she's an s rank tourist with these stats in comparison and her winnings in comparison. Yeah, Gal Bracer is funny. Much love to you guys, though. See you next time, and have a great day. Goodbye. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made.